Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our last week, lecture 13. So this week is for revision, actually. And along with the revision, I'm supposed to give you some sort of uh, instructions, some set of guidelines, some set of tips how to crack the final term exam in a good manner. So there are two different parts. Exam review part A will be covered will be covered in today's discussion. Mostly it will cover week week one to week eight. Then I have another part B that I will uh, discuss on the coming Friday during one hour of tutorial class. So that will cover from week nine to week twelve. Whatever we have learned in this uh, introduction to ma management, inter introduction to marketing subject. So, we are not going to learn anything new uh, from today. Uh, it's just a kind of revision, but you are allowed to ask if anything is not clear, any uh, specific topic, any specific term or subject or uh, proposition or element anything if it is not clear or the steps are not clear and so you, you can have like you can request me then we can have a kind of uh, more and more discussion around that construct otherwise i have my own flow i will uh, let you know at at the various interval of time like when, what what are the important aspects especially uh, for your exam so let's go through uh, what was the objective, learning objective of this course? If once you decided uh, to enroll in marketing ma marketing course, what do you thought like, what, what sort of uh, learning objective was there in your mind? So let me have a kind of uh, re-emphasis on the objective, what was there and what, how, then you can just uh, compare your, where you are standing after the, after week 12. So the learning objective or outcomes of this course was, uh, to ensure that you can uh, discuss key concepts and the uh, principle of marketing, identify and explain main factors inv involved in understanding the marketplace, understand the steps involved in marketing planning and decision, analyze component of marketing mix, extended seven Ps, access, analyze, uh, evaluate and the synthesize the information appropriate, appropriate for the marketing activities, work collaboratively, uh, coll uh, collaboratively to challenge and develop ideas and to communicate outcomes in both oral as well as the written context. So probably in the, the last objective where we have uh, individual as well as the group assignment and uh, the other objectives has been covered through the different uh, uh, key concept discussion uh, during the various weeks. So there, uh, therefore we are assessing the overall extent of extent to which you have demonstrated uh, these across the assessment, uh, including the exams. This means that I reserve the right to award a grade for those who has done good. So keeping that one in the mind once again, uh, do you feel comfortable in understanding what are the key concept, what are the principle, what are the key uh, components, what are the different steps around marketing, marketing processes, buying decision making and all. So we try to cover like most of the ideas uh, around this, uh, which was the supposed to be the kind of learning outcomes from this course. So as I said, the week last week is a kind of revision and allowing you to understand what will be the question pattern and how to understand that and how to get a good marks, how to attempt the questions in a good manner. So I think you know that this exam, the final term exam is going to be for three hours. Uh, plus 10 minutes will be reading time. I'm not sure I will be your invigilators or somebody else, but whoever will be there uh, you need to keep uh, all these uh, things in mind that uh, maybe the starting 10 minutes is just for your understanding the once again going through the instruction guidelines and in case of any, any doubt you, you you have initial uh, 10 minutes you have time to ask to your invigilators and then after that you have another three hours just to 
write your answer for all the different questions which are uh, will be the part of your final final set of exam the broadly uh, there are two different parts of your exam the part a and part b part b is only the case study whereas the part a where we will try to look at like i will try to uh, judge your your logical thinking critical thinking on the basis of uh, different learning outcomes different topics which we have covered together in in the class of uh, during the class of, on marketing so the part a consists of eight questions each question is worth 10 marks each question is has having uh, two parts for example uh, uh, first A and first B, second A, second B. So the, all the eight questions will have uh, two choices, A and B. So the question A will be six marks, B will be four marks, or maybe A will be eight marks, B will be two marks, or maybe five and five. So, but but the idea is each question will carry 10 marks in the part A. For example, uh, part A will be one A will be the discuss uh, discuss the main component of uh, many steps involved in the marketing process, or maybe the part B will will be uh, can you provide one example uh, the real life example where you have noticed that these steps are being followed something like that. So both in one particular question, both part A and part B will be from one specific uh, chapter. It won't be a kind of uh, one will be one part A will be part one A will be pricing or part uh, one B will be on the distribution. It won't be the case. So one specific uh, question will have will be uh, covering one particular topic, broad topic. I mean to say, like which we have uh, covered in in the during the class. Meanwhile, if you have any doubt or anything which is not clear, please uh, you, you just uh, let me know so that I can let, let bring more clarity spontaneously at the same point of time so as i said uh, part a consists of eight questions so but what is important here you are supposed to answer you are you, you, you are to choose four out of eight so only four answers you have to give in the part a so only the four will be marked even if you are attending more than four it, it, it's uh, totally depend on me I will select only any four and I will assign you the mark. So be careful. You have to answer only four questions. Means four questions means four questions, both the part, part like bo both the sub part, part A and part B. So if you one question, you have to attempt full. It's, it should not be a case of uh, that you are selecting one A and second B. It has to be one A and one B together. Otherwise four A, four B together. 8a or 8b together so that you should keep in mind you should attempt four questions but as a full so four questions part a will carry 10 marks each so you will be awarded on the 40 marks in the part a in the part b as i said it will be a kind of case study discussion so it can it will carry 30 marks so it's a mandatory to attempt because so altogether, the question has been set for 70 marks. So part A, 40 marks and part B, 30 marks. So total 70 marks and uh, whatever you will score up, uh, up, uh, out of 70, I will just make it half because the final uh, uh, final component interim exam has the 35% uh, uh, weightage. So part B is a case study. If you remember, we have, uh, I tried to take you uh, to, to a some extent, I, I couldn't say that uh, very much we have done uh, uh, the analysis on the cases, but yes, in one specific lecturing in 10 or 11, I was like totally dedicated at two hours. We, we had a two different smallest small cases, like one page, page cases, and we tried to understand it together, keeping the mind of some of the certain parameters. So remember the case study will have, after having one uh, reading one page of uh, case study, you are supposed to answer three questions. So the th three questions will be like the part 9A, 9B, and 9C. It will be something like 9A will be, can you like, you need to analyze the macro related environment around this case, or maybe the different marketing mix related information you have to gather from that case. Part the 9B will be, 
uh, some something on the same analysis like you need to analyze some sort of uh, marketing tools or maybe uh, you know product expense and greed or can you uh, so something like that that will be the 9b or 9c will be something like uh, can you suggest some sort of uh, stp related strategy can you uh, suggest some sort of uh, effective uh, segment uh, segmentation criteria on the basis of that can you suggest some recommendation for this company on the basis of that particular uh, case so remember it will be kind of 25 5 or maybe 20 uh, 15 10 5 something like that but altogether it will carry 30 marks part b 30 marks part a 40 marks so I think uh, the way I have explained uh, the kind of uh, the outline of this uh, the interim exam paper, I think it, it, it will be clear for you. But maybe since this is very important, let me know if anything is not clear for you. Otherwise, I will proceed further. Now it's your time. If you think, yeah. All clear, sir. All clear. All clear. 40 plus 30. Yes. And the final exam has a 35% contribution. So out of 70, whatever you will receive. I will just make it half and I will uh, forward the same marks to the NIC management for you. For the remaining component of part, like I will discuss once again, but this is for the final. Um, so for the, for the part A, uh, we only have to answer four questions, right? Yes, out of eight, only four, but four including both the, both the component A and B. I mean to say each question has one A, one B. 2A uh, B. So if you are choosing one particular two, question two on suppose and on, on particular topic like pricing will be the question two. So the pricing on the question two, you will have 2A and 2B. So you need to attempt both 2A and 2B, maybe six, uh, okay. six marks and four marks. So you, both you have to attend. There is no choice in that one. All right. So I was. Price. Yeah, please go ahead. So what if I'm not sure with the answers and I answered another question? Will you consider to get the answers which has the highest score? Once again, could, could you pardon? So what if I answered five questions because they're, what if like I do not, I'm not uh, confident in some questions, so I wanted to answer more. Will that be considered like you'll try to consider a question okay. with the highest marks? There or? Are, there, okay, there, there is two things. First okay. is like first and foremost, I will suggest not to attempt more than that because All right. it's always better to pick up good uh, four questions where you, you think you have more, more better understanding and go and write down in like, you know, it's like very important. Your content has to be very important. I will let you know that everyone. All the paper will uh, you need to submit it through the Turnitin, and Turnitin will give you a kind of plagiarism, like how much you have copied from the wave resources and all in your answer set. Accordingly, your marks will be assigned. So instead of writing five or six questions, I will suggest that uh, just pick up, take your own time. It's a three hours like paper. I'm so, like, I don't think so. It, like maybe two hours, it will be enough. Two hours, 20 minutes will be enough. You have more time. So it's better to pick up uh, only four questions. You decide on that one where you feel more comfortable, more logical, where you have studied more and more. You can build more argument around that. And then you try to that. Uh, attempt only four. But in case, if you are attempting attempting the fifth one as well, probably out of five, which, whichever will be the maximum four, I will take that one up. Okay, okay, I understand. Thank so still, you. Since you have attempted, so I should not ignore. So what I will do, I will check all the five, but but the only the best four I will consider for the total marks. That I can do, but still I will suggest better not to attempt something additionally. I think it's very clear, like we have the clear, uh, clear cut topic, right? So you, you, you just have to master five or six good top and like good chapters. And I think that will be uh, oh, I see, good I see. enough for, for your exam. All right. Thank you. I just want clarification on that. Sure, sure. So next one is, uh, okay. I think, uh, did I discuss what is permitted and what is not permitted in the exam? Did you uh, guys? Um, sir, uh, can you use Moodle in exam? Can you use Moodle? Like, yes. can you use Moodle in exam or not? We can't. Moodle means you need to submit. I, I will let you know. Like, uh, uh, you need to submit your answer script through the Moodle. No, like, if, if like, uh, 
can we like uh, do access to Moodle like week one, week two in exam or not? It's up to you. If it, it will be in your system, uh, you, you can use it. Like, but yeah. I will suggest like, you. Like if we need, like if we need any help or like because the notes are allowed it in the exam. It's yes, a, like, what, book. Yeah. Yes, Sahid. What, what, what I will suggest you, you just before sitting an exam, before that you just download all the uh, PPTs and everything in your system. I will suggest you that. Anyway, okay. you have the access to, of the model anytime. That is not a problem. But I will suggest you to uh, keep downloaded all the PPTs beforehand. I think I, that will be better. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, thank you. I just want to confirm that. Yeah, yeah thank you. But anyway, any uh, like you, Moodle, you will be having access to Moodle because finally, what what I will suggest you to, I will show you where where in which window you have to submit your uh, answer sheet. Uh, I will okay. suggest you to use uh, uh, the, not not the PDF file. I will suggest you the way you have submitted the assignment in the Microsoft Word file. You just write all the answers in that one and then uh, put your name as a file in the file and submit through the Turnitin. Then only it will go through the plagiarism. Then from there I will download and then I will access your, I will assign the marks or kind of uh, after reading that one. So I like the a, the a4 double notes are allowed it. You have the A4 page double sided notes. Okay, for the memory aid, yes, it is there. I need to discuss this one. Okay, okay, you're talking about the memory aid, yes. A4 size, double sided, yeah. So that you can keep it uh, with, with you. But you are permitted to take uh, into the exam one A4 page of double uh, sided notes. You must leave this page with your exam booklets. There is no need because we are not in the face to face. So just keep it with you. I will suggest you to uh, keep it as a like handwritten or maybe you can use the type or the uh, or maybe the printout, but I will suggest the handwritten uh, written will be the best one because you you will know exactly where you have written. It. You know it will be easy for you to retrieve the information, particular information from that seat. So I, I'm sure like you will be using very small small font, so it's better to use the handwritten. Make it handwritten. Only write down the things you, you need to remember, like the major steps and all. Otherwise, all the PPTs, everything, you, you will have access of that one because this is the kind of uh, exam where you have, you are sitting on this on desktop or the laptop. Kind of. So students who think that they don't have to study with the memory aid are sadly mistaken. Uh, there are like the cases where, where, when you, you, you know, uh, I mean to say overall learning is like, it's better to keep it, uh, a good uh, memory aid uh, with the key points. It will uh, be always helpful for you. And probably you can, like I will le uh, let you know throughout this uh, two hours, what, what are the uh, key concept in each chapter on which you can make a mem uh, memory. Yeah. So that I will discuss in throughout the uh, week one to week eight in this slide. So it is there in the slide. So I will uh, let you know like how to make uh, the uh, memory aid, keeping what sort of concept and theories in, in mind. I will discuss it. Okay, something more. Uh, okay, uh, probably like you, you might have heard that it's mandatory for, for final term exam and term exam to put your camera on. Uh, I think. Hello, some background noise I can hear. Let me close all the mute all. Okay. So what I was suggesting that for the exam, for the entire period of exam, keeping your camera on is mandatory now. Mandatory means it, it's must. If you think that in your system or in your house or in your uh, location where you, you are, planning to sit and for the exam, if you think that the internet services are unreliable or maybe that there will be the issue of bandwidth, low bandwidth and all, if you think that, I will suggest you to please move to the NIC campus. Grab some of the computer over there, ask the permission, grab some, or otherwise bring your stuff or laptop and sit anywhere in the NIC campus or even the university library. So make yourself comfortable and reliable 
using the reliably using the internet services so there should not be any excuse if you are not uh, visible because everything is going to record your uh, the three hours of exam period is going to record so you must put your camera on throughout three hours there is no excuse and if you are not able to do that the question will be uh, the, the question will be asked from the management and it's totally depend on them like how to evaluate in, on that basis so once again please make sure that you you are you, you are putting your camera on for the three hours and all the, in the, the recordings of your exam will be stored in the uh, nic management library so you need to be very careful in that one recently i came to know that uh, there is a something like signed cover sheet and you need to return to nic did you uh, guys uh, followed that instruction or not because we came to know one through an email that can you communicate this one to your student let me show you that what i'm asking you yeah i got it sir like we just got the email like a few days back from the university for the so yeah i have just done that i have just filled that nsc cover sheet and just send it back to the uni yes uh, probably like uh, the email suggests that uh, still there are a few students who has not covered who has not signed this cover sheet and returned to the nsc management so if any one of you who are sitting here and you have not done it i will request you to please take this consider this one as like uh, very very important so just a kind of uh, reminding reminder to you because they requested us uh, to just uh, communicate this one to all all the students so still if you you think that you have not signed it and returned to the nic management please do it and thank you sahit confirming that you have done that then uh, okay this one is uh, avoid the point number 3 avoid plagiarism not look at the google for solution suppose i'm asking you like how what sort of uh, integration how you can uh, see that all the marketing mix uh, seven marketing mix are correlated to each other suppose this one is a question for eight marks one good way is like whatever you learn or if you can use the memory uh, seat and see the key points and build the arguments around that on but sometimes maybe you think about okay let's have a kind of some analysis what what google is saying and because this is the kind of online exam you have the freedom to go ahead and search for the information it's okay fine whatever you are saying but if you are copying it exactly and putting on your word file and just submitting that it will go through the turnitin and it will clearly clearly indicate that this answer is not your own answer i mean i want all your answer has to be your own except the key term key words which is from marketing but the the way you are framing the argument should be very very unique it should not be the same as the your colleague so this one this point is very important because you know if i will see that most of 50% of uh, uh, content is uh, plagiarized probably i will not motivate i will be not motivated to give you good marks and later on if i, I finally have to submit the answers to the all the booklets answer sheets to the nic management and somebody can ask while while having a kind of you know after the exam there is a moderation for, for one week so each subject goes through the moderation where we are, we are at, at random we select four or five answer sheet and they some other person from other department they check that the, does the mark has been provided is the right or not something like that so they can easily track if i i will be you know like avoid if i will be avoiding and giving you proper marks instead of having a you know 40% 50 or 80% of plagiarism probably there will be a question mark on on my integrity there so this point is very very important and at the same time i want you to uh, i was i wanted to show you where you have to submit on the turnitin so this one is again very important here i mean you should not send it to me on my email id yes so you have moodle here yes you see the welcome to the foundation of marketing you submitted for the assignment 2 assignment 3 you see i was trying to create a, as a separate one 
in the broader uh, text, but I failed I, because I don't have the mastery on this Moodle uh, interface. Can you see the final term exam, one turn it in submission for the final exam term? Under the assessment three, group situation analysis report. Can you see the final term exam? Yes, we can see it. Yes, if you click that, it will uh, see all the students name who are in this class. So the moment you will submit through this, uh, later on after this uh, class also you go and check and if everything, because I have set the timing like a starting time 26th May, 8.30, from 8.30 to 11.45 or 11.40 is your exam. So 8.30 to 8.40 will be kind of uh, your um, like 10 minutes uh, initial instruction and then three hours for the exam. So you need to submit it because the time window is 8.30 to 11.45. So you are supposed to submit your answer sheet in this, through this Turnitin only in between these three hours, 8.40 to 11.45. So keep that one in mind. This is very, very important. You should not, and also try to keep it in case if it is not coming to here and all later on, I can ask you to uh, 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 resubmit or something. So keep one copy safe in your system. This is very important. Close it properly, uh, submit through the Turnitin and submit a copy also in, in your system. If you're using the library system and all, try to keep a one copy on, on your email. It's all, all, your, all your own responsibility, moral responsibility to keep it safe unless until. Yes, uh, maybe I will confirm on the same day, or maybe by evening I will confirm that yes, I have received something like that. I will update on the announcement in case I, if there will be any issue and some, I, have, I haven't received for someone, I will clearly indicate on the announcement under the Moodle. So you can go through that. But this one is the only one window under the assessment number, assessment three. Only one window, final term exam through this Turnitin window, just below the uh, group assignment, those who have submitted. You have the final term exam and that window, you have to submit all your answers. Only one, one, one submission is required will be enough. One, one uh, document, and I, as I suggested, it's better to have a kind of uh, Word, Microsoft Word document instead of PDF and any other version. Okay, something regarding the attendance, uh, I will uh, suggest everybody individually, individually you go through the model and you see that in case, uh, you know, if, if you notice that I marked you absent, despite of being present on, on a class on a particular day, if you remember, then please let me know directly. I will go back because I have the chat history uh, saved in my system. So accordingly, I will update. So these are the minor thing. If you think that uh, by mistake or something, uh, it happened. So I'm ready to correct it. That is not a problem. So please let me know. That is not a problem. Just let me know through the email. Okay, very important now, the group assignment feedback has been shared to the members in a group. I mean to say those, uh, it's not everybody has submitted, right? So only one person in the group has submitted uh, the assignment. So that person will be able to see the feedback. So what I will suggest to you, suppose uh, uh, those who have submitted, just download the feedback with the comments I have provided and the marks has been given in, in the feedback summary. So maybe we, you can have a quick look, uh, quick look here. What I mean to say here is, for example, this assignment has been submitted by Steven and prepared by two students, Steven and uh, Jing Chao. And they got uh, out of, uh, you see, there is a feedback summary here at the corner feedback summary. So if you click here in this one, feedback summary, you have the feedback summary out of 100, out of 179, so I converted out of 30. So it comes around uh, 24. So the 24 marks I have assigned here, it goes directly to the those who's, who submitted. In this case, there's Steven. But the 24 marks I have also separately assigned to the Jing Chao because he's also a member of this one. But Jing Tao is not able to see this document, so it's moral responsibility of Steven to download here this file. Download this file from here. Yes, this is the download here. Download the current view. 
with the because lots of uh, comment i have given so you just download it and share see all the everywhere you have the feedback so share this one to your friends and the other colleague members so the assignment part uh, i must say that you, you guys has improved a lot in terms of compared to the individual assignment i could see that uh, some of the submissions are really really good and individual individually have seen that you have contributed much also so and that's why you have a good marks in compared to the individual assignment you have uh, somehow i tried to give you the so, so yeah. i have a question yeah please ask so what about like our assignment uh, yeah like individually because you are in your group is the special case where like all the three members has not uh, contributed so still i am waiting for the enoc uh, he has not submitted so individually i have assigned the marks for your your part and for uh, so i already done it so you can go through that marks and feedback everything i have assigned where like uh, where can you just check the feedback sorry sir yes where like With feedback the, the where you have submitted so you have just email like oh email okay. to us sir? no 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 you submitted right yeah i submitted yeah yes you submitted so you will be able to see that that that's what i'm saying just wait over here you go through this window if you could could see 30% yeah here is all the submission uh okay so sure, got it got it got it got so it. for you suppose here sahir so you have the marketing report marks has been allocated so the moment you will click you will you will see that your part with the comments provided right uh, again in the chat box or feedback summary you have the so i have assigned especially for you and one one, one more uh, i have just assigned the marks on the basis of what part you have done because uh, it, okay. okay and just let me know through the email if you have any issues not a problem but oh, it's done okay so if like Ah, uh, okay, sure, sir. I will just email you. I will exactly in case of anything because this is a very specific one because only the your group was the defaulter. I mean to say who failed to submit uh, on the time in in the. I have just team. tried, sir, for like I can submit the keeping full assignment. That, but sorry for yes, that. Keeping that motivation in mind, I try to give a good marks to you guys as, as well. Not yeah, the motivation sure, factor was like not not in, in my hand. Yeah. So I try to give. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. so now uh, we will we will start with the chapter wise so before that just let me know is is there any anything which is not clear till till this point of time um i'll just send an email in my side for not seeing any feedback so that, that that's just it you are not able to see any feedback yeah i i have received no grade or feedback no or can can i show you here we just wait there how it is possible it's okay we can just discuss this in the email and you can continue with the lecture yes i can yeah but just if i could see here yes the marks is given to you maybe you, if you click here then only the feedback yes i i could see everything but in case if you are not able to see that just let me know okay not a problem but you did uh, your group has done really good congrats thank you sir so let's go through uh, some of the some sort of revision not really but yes keeping a, in a mind that i'm just trying to let you know that what things you can put in your memory add that would help you during the exam while writing the answer so we started with the core marketing concepts and understanding that links between them describe and discuss maybe this one could be direct question for your exam 
like what a can be because this question is very very important what is important here it's not the understanding of the key marketing concept it's understanding of how these concepts or the components are related to each other the linking between this one that is the synthesis i, I will be looking for uh, in the exam so try to understand this. You should not just give explain like what is need, wants, and demand, what is the market offering, what is value satisfaction, quality, exchange, transaction, relationship, and market. You should not uh, make a five different paragraphs uh, saying that this defines this belongs to this, this is the way, this is being defined as this. Like that is that will be an answer, but not the proper answer. Because the question is you need to establish the link between each other. So there is a kind of suggestion here. You could see the memory ad tip is write down the names of the five core uh, marketing concept, but study what they are in details and how they link one to each other. They link to each other. So if you make a notes on the linking in a logical manner, I think that will give you the advantage. So be careful only two pages back, back to back. So you, you need to be careful with the content which you wanted to, uh, to have during your exam. So the linking is important here that you should keep in mind. So this, suppose this one will be the part A and the part B. In question one, uh, one A will be the linking between the component and the, the question B will be like, suppose I, I can ask like, can you give one example where, uh, is the where, where you notice the exchange transaction sort of relationship then you need to think about any of the business organization any of the corporate examples where we have noticed then you have to think about critically logically and then you try to build the arguments around that and then you write the answer and as i said in this question uh, like four questions you, you you can think about the timing i probably i have not discussed about that there are two parts, part A and part B. Part A is 40 marks, part B is 30 marks. So my, my, uh, my understanding is you can devote one and a half hour, one, one and a half hours for part A, I mean 90 minutes. And for part B, you can have, uh, since it is a case study and followed by three questions, so you can devote uh, maximum one hour, 10 minutes. And keep last 20 minutes for a revision. Or giving the proper shape because now you're, it's a kind of the document. So if you can make it like more presentable, something like that, it's up, up to you. Somebody can think about adequate. Somebody can think about more and more, uh, more and more appealing. So it, it's totally up to you. Even adequate is fine, but accordingly, if you're making your answers, arguments more appealing and all that will attract more marks, obviously. So more and more logical thinking and all will give you the added marks. That is not a problem. So this is just an indication that if you are understanding anything, try to see, look at from the different lens, uh, try to have interlinkages, try to see the correlation uh, kind of thing, you know, between the various uh, concepts all around. Suppose in the marketing of services, we learn about uh, the, uh, different characteristics, five characteristics of the services. So, probably, uh, so instead of writing, uh, asking the, you that, can you define all those five characteristics? I will ask you that, can you relate? Can you make a kind of linking between all these five characteristics? And what, as a manager, part B will be, as a manager, what, what sort of strategy will be suitable in order to overcome the, those challenges which is being offered, which, which is being, uh, uh, given uh, by these these five characteristics. So, so think about the question will be more as a more and more as a kind of application based rather than descriptive. We are not looking for much descriptive. We are looking for more much uh, uh, synthesis of the understanding, evaluating, comparing the different aspects altogether. So the more practical based, more application based. Your answer has to be. Instead of writing, this one is being defined like this, CRM is being relationship is, is being defined, that should be a part. But broadly, you need to have a kind of thinking, critical thinking, 
logical thinking around that particular uh, concept. Okay, this is the marketing processes like uh, process five different steps. So keep that one in mind. One can make a small uh, keynotes on around this markets where we talk about buyers, actual buyers plus potential buyers. We talked about the potential buyers. They are also known as prospects. Actual buyers are the customer, and we have seen in the later letters of loyalty the different stages of. Uh, the different phases of uh, the level of loyalty possessed by the different uh, profile. You, you should not, since we are using the kind of, you know, uh, the you, you, I'm not allowing you to draw and do some sort of image or the table or the figure. So unfortunately, you won't be uh, able to be much creative in terms of uh, framing some sort of it's up to you if you are able to do that it's fine and if you are not able to do that try to write in the, in the sentences that will be okay does that make sense it's up to you it's up to you because uh, for this triangle suppose you wanted to use it probably you, you won't have the designing sort of you know unless until you are using some sort of apps which allow you to do the drawing on the screen or something but even if you don't have such, try to, if you wanted to express it, try to write in the paragraphs, different, different paragraphs, and ma make it answer like more appealing. I, I mean to say, I should be, you know, quite uh, kind of, uh, it should give me kind of motivation that, yes, something is there, something which I wanted to look, look at in the answer from the different, different pers perspective. So try to make as a more, uh, you know, appealing kind of thing. Content has to be there. Good content, quality content, critical analysis has to be there. Sometimes I know some of you are struggling with writing uh, in, in terms of uh, academic writing, you know, but okay, I will try, I will not try to give you like uh, disappoint you on those front. I will try to cover up those, those things because there are ways to improve. Every day you can improve in yourself, but at least with the analysis, with the synthesis and all, try to bring the good, good points in your discussion, in your paragraphs. And as, as I said that uh, just after uh, uh, submitting all the exam seats to the NIC management, I will go through the moderation. Every, every faculty has to go through the moderation where we have to sit with the other faculty from the universities and they will look at at random five or six papers and they will see that how I have evaluated your marks. So if you are not doing good, probably I won't be able to give you the good marks, but sure, you have seen, uh, noticed me that in terms of your uh, individual assignment and the group assignment, if your work is good, noticeable, I don't have any issue in giving very good marks. So please keep that one in mind. These are the seven offerings, different things which can be marketed. In terms of product offering, it could be a good services, person, place, organization, information, and ideas. And we have seen we, all these uh, these uh, these seven or eight different items throughout the journey. Value proposition, especially the lecture eleven or like lecture lecture ten, especially two hours we have devoted on the value proposition. But maybe when we started the journey in the week one, that point of time I was not. Uh, you know, like I was not able to give you the much input, but separately we took this concept of value proposition, differentiation and positioning and unique value proposition separately in two hours in the lecture 10 or 11. So probably not everything is there in this slide, but these, these are the important concept, important things which were uh, like you can build up the arguments around the value proposition. You see, if you are, what is one more like, I mean to say like one important point while writing the answer is use the marketing phrases, use the marketing keywords, use the marketing, uh, you know, which the kind of uh, keywords or the phrases, phrases or the kind of, uh, you know, a special unique word which is more prevalent or uh, which is more usable in the marketing term, like the value propositions like the core competency, like the uh, marketing mix. So keep building, keep using, you know, it has to be a kind of uh, marketing uh, sentences, like sentences uh, just for the marketing literature kind of uh, 
academic writing has to be around the marketing keywords sort of thing. So use the, the, the like good good sort of uh, combining good uh, good sort of keywords or phrases while framing or writing your answer. Customer uh, relationship management we have seen separately in one hour of tutorial. If you could remember, I, I bring the concept of customer relationship management CRM. And we had a discussion why the, in spite of having the importance or not noticeable importance of the term CRM, is still the 85% of the organization they fail because of some of the issues like the leadership issues are there, the communication channel is not working properly. So there are issues around that. But still the importance of uh, CRM is not uh, undermined, cannot be undermined. Okay, let's see here. Suppose this is another chapter, consumer decision making. Four fact factors influencing the consumer behavior and the stages of the consumer decision making. So remember the five or six stages are there in the consumer decision making and the, over here in this slide, the four major factors which influences the buying behavior like cultural, social, personal, and psychological. So what, what memory tip says that? write down the names of the four factors okay but study what each one is in detail and how they work together to influence consumer behavior so can you think about how the cultural aspects plus personal aspects work together in the particular dec buying decision making or maybe the social plus psychological so this sort of analysis will be a kind of welcoming in terms of uh, answer. So try to think about uh, like logically how these factors could be, could be related to each other. So memory aid has to be a very, very promising notes kind of, that really supports you during your exam. Keep that one in mind. This one is for your lifelong learning. Always keep in mind that uh, in order to understand the behavior, the buying behavior of a customer, we wanted to know what is there in the mind of the customer. And that is known as buyer's black box. Black box. It's any accident, aero accident, airlines accident, they only look for what? Black box. Because they believe that black box will give, indicate the actual or genuine reason why the accident happened. So in the same way, buyer's how they, they think critically in, in the mind before making a uh, decision regarding the purchasing. So understanding the buyer's black box is very, very important. And as a job of market here, if you succeed in understanding the black box of buyers, you, you can do miracle there. The different stages, five stages in the decision making process. One of the memory, aid, it says that you can obviously write down the names of the stages of the consumer buying decision making process, but study what each entails and think about how you would illustrate these with an example. So sometimes you have to provide example. The question will be in the part second, it will be a kind of, can you provide one example, real example where you purchase some 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 items in the more recently, and you have gone through all these five steps. So in that case, you have to write from your own reflection, from your own it, uh, experience. It has to be a reflection of what actually happened in your, not in others. So even the uh, you know, you can get some ideas from Google and all, but probably it's better to uh, write something which you have personally experienced. So maybe the answer will be very unique. It will be different from others and it will be good uh, it, it will be rewarded in a good manner so putting one example okay evaluation of uh, alternatives the question could be in a part uh, one will be how these five steps are related to each other in part b for two or three marks can you provide one example of how you evaluate the alternatives different alternatives Although it will be for two or three marks, but still you have to write something which is, you know, which has to be the, in terms of your own experiences or something which you have noticed in your family or in your workplace or so anywhere. 
or maybe the question will be uh, in the post purchase behavior is you know there is a kind of either satisfaction or dissatisfaction so as a market share what steps what strategy you will think about to implement in order to reduce the uh, dissatisfaction in the customer so then you have to think about maybe you can offer something like warranty more guarantee and something there is a concept of cognitive uh, cogni uh, dissonance cognitive dissonance so you can use some of the marketing word then your answer will be more and more uh, appealing i think we can have a kind of uh, discussion over here does this the way i'm taking you uh, through the different slides uh, slides does that make sense to you yes it makes sense for others for others yes that's good yep that's good that's good okay makes sense okay good so stages in the decision making process but what is important can you relate it uh, this these stages in one example with one example so that could be a kind of question in the exam different buying roles or customer or buying decision roles you can be a kind of user you can be a buyer you can be decider you can be influencer you can be initiator different roles of a, as a human being okay then we have seen the different four bases to segment consumer market i mean we have seen the different bases of segmentation remember this when we started talking with the cp segmentation targeting and positioning in the segmentation we have seen the different bases of segmentation okay these these are the four bases of segmentation geographic demographic psychographic and behavioral and then we have in each uh, segmentation we have different subgroups unfortunately you won't be able to connect using the framework or using the diagrams and all but try to do do your best i mean to say if you are able to do that it's appreciated otherwise just put it everything in the paragraphs nice paragraphs and if you think that the different concept is there you wanted to have like one paragraphs to focus one particular theme of concept and the another paragraph so then you use the multiple paragraphs break it, break it down the extent it will be like more appealing it it will be more clarity for me that will be better but remember one thing your answer should not be very very uh, you know extensive i mean to say precision will be required clarity will be required along with the you know the academic writing has to be clear as well as the concise too much content unnecessary content will not give much adoptions i won't say but if you think it is like uh, required do it but not much because i have not given you i forgot to tell this one that i have not given you the word limit in any of the question but remember if something is like eight marks and two marks you know like how much will be the for, suitable for the two marks and how much we you should write for the eight mark don't treat both the question as like equal weights in terms of the content arguments paragraphs so it, it there should be a different in the case study also like uh, one of the question will be 20 marks one is on five and five so the 20 marks probably you need to devote much more time on that around building each and every paragraph so it's you need to be logical you need to be careful in that these are the requirement for effective segmentation so probably i can ask like can you relate to one specific uh, form or maybe the form which you have considered in your assignment uh, how they have managed with the this uh, segmentation what what are the criteria they have so probably you have to mold your answer little bit towards the real world example so that that skills i i wanted to have on the on the paper so 
think on those lines and then write, not blindly, just copying the, the keynotes uh, from the cheat, uh, memory cheat ad is not going to bear. Gives proper time to think and then write down. Okay, the next chapter was like uh, marketing environment where uh, broadly we have seen uh, macro environment and micro environment. As I said, the probably the case study I'm giving you the uh, like indication over here that case study uh, will let you are uh, like will ask to relate uh, the case with the micro level as well as maybe the macro level. I'm not sure, but probably one of the factor will be there. So we have covered uh, what both both the forces, right? Micro as well as macro. Let's go through that. And the macro broad one we have noticed that economic, natural, demographic, technological, political, and culture. So it's very simple. If you understand what what exactly the uh, the what, what are the factors in the related to the economic? Just reading the case, you need to understand. You sometimes, you know, it, you need to uh, bring the key points from the case, especially for the case study design. If the question is, can you discuss on the from this case what are the macro environment it talks about, it discusses about. In that case, uh, you should try to capture the aspects from each of these categories. Suppose since it is a very small case one page case probably you will see that there will be not much on discussion on uh, you know demographic maybe or maybe the political content will be not there but be careful I, I mean to say don't jump like maybe you can read the case twice and in the while writing the first time just you can think about the keynotes what are the important things are there so maybe you, you know it depends like but if you think that there is no factor related to the economic and the, the natural one you can write one line on around that one that like as per this case there is no uh, facts or figures related to the natural uh, forces which is again an important of the macro environment so it's up to you writing in a good manner showing that you know everything but since this case is not having any factor related to the cultural aspect so you are not covering it so try to bring it from your own side. It's better uh, to you know like make it clear that there are like more the case has a more macro uh, environment related forces around economic, demographic, and technology factor, less on natural, uh, political, and cultural factor. I, I will really like those sort of writing instead of just giving that economic is this, uh, technology is this, and demographic is this make it more appealing. I mean to say, you have to bound, you have to make it more logical. So the micro and macro environment, like macro is the external environment, whereas the micro level is the form specific environment. So we know that the difference, differences between these two is the macro environment, which the organization has no any control but the forces related to the micro environment that organization can control and who are the members around the micro environment your customer your supplier your, your partners your competitors or your government agencies so those who has the so we have seen so what is memory aid says that over here think about what the macro environment is and why it's important to know about it and consider it. Write down the names of the six forces, but study and learn about their details. As I said, understanding what are the aspects. Economic, there are seven or eight uh, items under the economy, which we have covered. And you have to relate this one with the case. So since these are the broad one, simply, simply writing that, Okay, the technique, uh, the economic factors it talks about, but what exactly in the economic you need to pick up from the case. To the greater extent, if you are able to pick up the answer and the, those facts and figures from the case, you, your marks will be higher. So that 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 is up to you. So, but since it is a small case, don't worry much. Just read twice and thrice, and everything will be all right. 
like for example the dem demographic trend so does does that does that case talks about the diversity or maybe the population shift or is the case of aging population so these are the broad sub items which we have learned so you need to relate it instead of simply saying that demographic trends you need to pick up which is specific trend inside the demographic and then build the arguments around that lots of factors around the economic one technological environment we talked about the top 10 uh, strategic technology trend for 2020 i mean you know it's up to you how how how, how much you're failing answers you are making but sometimes if you are <coughs> bringing you know something some statistics some facts and figures from the industry or from the organizations that is always welcome but what i say we are looking for your practical understanding real world understanding around the marketing concept so if you are bringing something like the gartner 2020 reports it also indicates while writing the argument if you are adding something like that the gartner 2020 reports on the technology trend they clearly indicate that the uh, you know pick up anyone the security security aspects are very very prominent in the coming years is going to be very prominent very important for the organization in the coming years you see you are building the argument bringing some sort of statistics building some sort of facts and figures build you are you are providing justification for, in order to support your argument that that sort of answers it has are welcome always welcome and it surely it will attract more marks so you have from today to next 27 right you have exam on 26 right you have another 5 or 6 days i will suggest you to make your memory aid so that it, it it's really going to give a kind of value addition in your exam not only not only the gartner one you, you know like even you can bring some of the experiences from your individual uh, project and the group assignment almost every 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 aspects of marketing we have covered in 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 during the individual uh, while writing the individual assignment and the group assignment so and both are contents on the both one individual and group assignments are based on the real world example you have pick, picked up two different forms one is for when, while doing your individual assignment one is for the group assignment so you have now two uh, broad forms understanding right so even if you are writing any of the arguments bringing examples and all try to bring it from there that that exposure that will really uh, will be outstanding and 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 sure that will be really appreciated so more and more business world example real world example real world life happenings and all if you are able to relate this marketing concept with that i think nobody can stop you giving good mark not even me so probably one way is to look at all these things is like go through a uh, quickly quickly go through all the download all the slides from week 1 to week 12 download all the slides and see is what what is there any slide like for this example in this slide it it, it says that gartner suggests this something you can just make a note somewhere that if suppose if macro environment question will be coming will be coming in the exam probably i will try to put it frame it this argument in that time in order to have that answer something like that it kind of you know the kind of uh, critical thinking it will indicate that you are very good in terms of evaluating in, in terms of balancing your argument bringing the real life as well as the research inputs so lots of benefits are there while integrating the simple answer with with your all these findings like technical and deloitte technical uh, see the technology trends are there the biggest technology so there are different different reports even apart from that you can have 
any other reports making it while writing the arguments we use that use that natural environment political environment So the political environment uh, sometimes even the, the, there might be the cases that uh, or um, maybe the case may talk about something political environment but maybe you you are not able to capture those aspects so we be careful in that one if you think that the case talks about you know the kind of uh, labor policy or it talks about some uh, you know security guidelines or the maybe the quality standards and all you can relate it those 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 aspects with the political environment so you need to be careful like before even you know, saying that there is no points you need to be careful and for that you need to understand what exactly what are the aspects the political environment it covers what are the forces or sub forces it covers so if the case is on the ethics and responsibility action by the firm of the organization probably you can relate it to the political politics political environment is not a politics i need to say so just be careful in that one it's it's all about the legislating uh, legislations government agency enforcement rules guidelines social responsible behavior of the firms cause related marketing responsible investment and many more social marketing and many more aspects are there it covers the political environment or here is the micro one which the firm has the direct control company supplier intermediaries competitors publics and customer so the memory aid suggests that write down the elements of the micro environment but study and learn the details about each actor in it why it is important because you will be able to then only you will be able to relate it with the particular case did you get some sort of you know indication that uh, since the case study will discuss about the micro like uh, the marketing environment right so pr probably the there will be no question from this chapter in the part a so you can think about that so the micro environment since it is coming for the case study probably it won't be a part of in the in the question on one to eight it won't be any question from the environment so you you can think about on those lines like but it's easy it will be easy for you to pick up for out of there now these are the micro competitors general publics okay the pricing we have seen the different uh, broadly and we have we have studied the different objectives pricing objectives pricing strategies or and then we have seen the pricing methods so surely there will be a good good uh, good question around the pricing some of the objectives over, over here different methods customer value based pricing customer cost based pricing or the competitive uh, based pricing oh so we have the memory aid here write down the names of the different pricing strategy or the objectives but study and learn what they are and how they are different from each other also be prepared to provide examples so probably this is the chapter where you wanted to have we wanted to have more and more example you need to provide because it's more mathematical so providing more like good examples like value based one you know the uh, who is the walmart everyday low price or even the woolworths so they 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 are more in the value based prices so if you are building the argument and giving more company specific examples i think that that will be good that will be good or maybe you can think about uh, 
uh, we have seen the uh, skimming strategy. So probably you can bring two or three good examples like Apple skimming strategy or maybe the uh, Google skimming strategy. It's or maybe the uh, like uh, uh, caterpillar skimming strategy. So it, it depends on you which particular industry you are work. You you have more knowledge. You can bring from uh, examples from those those corner of the part. So the application in this question will be more like more will be asking you more provide more examples. Hmm. This one is interesting. Value-based pricing and the cost-based pricing. You see the sequence of activities for the cost-based pricing. Design a good product. Determine the product cost. Set the price based on the cost and convince buyers to of the product value. I mean, it, the cost-based pricing is more. What do you think? It's a kind of. Uh, Company centric, can we say? Company decide everything. Company, they first make the product, design the product, and look at the manufacturing cost, unit cost of the production. Based on that, they add some sort of markup, some sort of return on investment, some sort of profit percentage. And finally, the final price, whatever com comes, they try to convince through the mass media marketing or maybe the direct marketing whatever the channel they use they try to convince the customer regarding that value so the cost based pricing is more more and more you, you can think about it's a kind of uh, more it's not a customer centric approach probably not to a great extent it's a more uh, company specific strategy company specific approach company centric approach but what about the value based pricing there this concept is very important you must remember this one for, for, for your lifelong the value based pricing value based pricing is from the customer perspective you keep you understand first the environment the demand, the needs, what exactly the customer's needs and wants are, and what stages, is, what are the different their demand status? Do have do they have the uh, purchasing parity, like purchasing power? First, you determine everything about your customer, your target customer, target segment, and basis on that, you are trying to provide values. So, what are the chain of activities? access the customer needs and the values and the perception value perception about that need set target price to match customer perceived value you are not putting an overestimating uh, you are not exceeding the the prices i mean to say based you try to match what value the customer they perceived at what price so you you try to set the price keeping the mind the customer perceived value then accordingly you determine the cost that can and that can be incurred so you go back to your uh, firm activities value chain activities and then according to the uh, perceived value and related the prices how much the customer can pay you go back to your manufacturing unit you go back to your uh, value chain activities and then you see you you try to see where where the prices can be cut down what are the activities can be minimized? What are the activities can be uh, lower down or maybe the eradicate or maybe the removed so that the prices goes further down, goes down further. So the determine the cost that can be incurred and then design the product to deliver desired value to add the desired 
happens as the target price. So the value-based pricing is totally the customer-centric approach. And that's why we have a very good example around us, all the big, big retail shops and all, where they try to lower down the cost, how they try to lower down the cost in their supply chain in the process of procurement, to the manufacturing, to the delivery and distribution, all this supply chain activity, remember, we had a discussion on the supply chain value chain altogether. So they tried to lower down the prices across the value chain activity. Why? Because they wanted to set the prices which matches the expectation of the customer. The customer can buy that product. So the cost-based pricing is a forward-looking one. I'm doing this one and I'm just pushing forward. Whereas the value-based pricing is the backward one. First look at the customer needs one, so how much they can pay and then go back to the organization and do the activities, lower down the cost, and then finally offer the cost. That, and that product at that particular price, try to end it. So one is forward-looking, whereas another one is backward-looking. You know, in the marketing, we have probably, we, I have not covered that one. There are two different, uh, very common strategy in the marketing. And we talk about, I'm talking about the pull versus push. Two strategies are very, very common in the marketing. One is pull strategy, P-U-L-L, and the second one is push strategy, P-U-S-H. What do you do? What company does in the push strategy? It's a cost-based pricing, push strategy. You make the product, you decide the price, you decide the profit percentage, you added that one, and then you, you are trying to push that product in the market. And you are saying that you are allowing customer to come and buy that product. It's a push strategy. What about the pull strategy? It's a reverse. Pull strategy means you are trying to match the expectation of the customer or particular segment. And then you are communic communicating that values to the customer. So in that case, you are not forcing them to buy. You are allowing them to, it's a kind of pulling back, pulling them, attracting them for your customer, for your product and service. So that is the push, uh, that is the pull strategy. So push versus push versus pull strategy. What do you think? Which one is the good strategy? I think it depends on, okay. on the company's objectives. So if they want to get more customers, you know, they would go for the value base to attract more customers. Yeah, and also it depends on the product and how they're trying to compete. So it could be a mashup of these two strategies because it can, mm, it's just my thoughts. Any other opinion? Good. I'll get back to you. Any other opinion? What do you think? Which one is the which one will be the optimal one, the best choice, or is there any nothing such as best choice? Like both strategy will be like equally valid, or is there any advantage or disadvantage of each strategy? I'm talking about the push versus pull strategy. Push versus means push means you are trying to forcefully push your product to the market. Pull pull strategy means you are not doing anything. You are attracting, let, let the customer to get attracted with your product and buy your product. As Amanda uh, rightly said, it depends. I agree with that one. It depends. It could be a kind of mix of both sometimes. But uh, the pool strategy, I think so. I think if you are understanding rightly your customer, so uh, it, it will be uh, good to go ahead with the kind of pool strategy instead of you know, forcing them to buy whatever you made. So the pool strategy does involve lots of marketing research, understanding the particular segments, needs, wants, 
who are the competitors. So lots of, lots of homeworks you have to do in, in, in terms of framing the pool strategy. Uh, uh, yeah, pool strategy. But push strategy, you're more centric, like your leaders, they think about this one is important without taking much advices, feedback from market, they're just right. So probably the more, more and more uh, academic literature or the marketing li literature, they suggest to have a kind of uh, uh, pull strategy. Going back here, so over here also the value-based pricing is a kind of pull strategy, whereas the cost-based pricing could be can be related to the push strategy. Different objectives we have seen is scheming or penetration, survival could be a kind of objective. Okay, the next one is product and services. I think uh, chapter six we have uh, we, we had a discuss on the product and services. Over here, the three levels of product. Even in some of the assignment, I have I I put the feedback, uh, provided the comment that why not you related product in terms of the th uh, three different levels of product. I mean, three different levels. The core product, actual product, and augmented product. I mean, if we have we are doing some sort of discussion around some of the key concept, it's better to use that one in in the discussion in terms of while writing the reports or while writing framing your answers for the interim exam it should it should appear there in like in your answer so the memory ad tip is write down the name of names of the three levels of product but study and learn what might be included in this when describing an example with the example be able to elaborate on each level it depends if the question is coming but probably this this won't be a from the case but yes if the, there will be not like question like can you think about one industry with one example of product line and can you narrate or describe the three levels of product and all then you or the different uh, attributes of the product so then you you can think uh, write your answer in by providing uh, what what are the features what are the different attributes across each level. Very, very good example we, ha we have here, the car example. I was talking about the service marketing. We have seen the, uh, we have noticed the five different, uh, over here it is four, but there are, there are four major uh, characteristics of the services, intangibility, variability, perishability and inseparability. So what memory ad tips over here is, write the names of the characteristics of the services, but study and learn what these mean and link them to a particular product or services using the three services piece. I mean, we are looking for more examples, industry specific example, firm specific examples. I mean, to say like, if the question could be kind of, if you encounter any of the services in the recent time, can you relate that one with the different characteristics of the services which you have learned in the market? Then you have to recall your services which you have consumed, encountered, and you have to think about what sort of variability you, you did and did you notice over there? Uh, is, is that is there any element of traceability was there? How the company they tried to tangibilize the intangibles? To what extent you feel that the intangibility was good or inseparability, how, uh, how they manage the issue of inseparability. So something like you need to build up uh, argument, keeping the, your experience in, in the, the one in mind. additional piece of services i think uh, i suggested many times that we have three additional piece because nowadays we are talking about product and services together so especially that these three p's are because of the service nature of because of the nature of the services 
So the physical evidence, your ambience, physical appearance are very important. The processes. We haven't talked much about the processes. I know that because uh, I taught before uh, one different unit, a module named as like marketing of services. In that, I, I went in depth where we have uh, lots of activities around building the blueprints. Lots of activities was there. But, but keep in mind, the process part is important. We haven't uh, um, uh, I had a discussion in detail, but yes, process is very, very important. Why? Because the service as a nature is very challenging. Everybody, if I'm trained and other person is not trained, maybe your experiences as a customer, your experiences will vary. So the one of the greatest challenge in the service industry is to maintain the consistency in, in terms of providing the services. So in order to maintain the consistency uh, in, in the delivery, so in the service, service delivery, the consistency, the process has to be recorded. I mean, to, it has to be properly communicated to each one. Process in this chain of activities. If the customer, they arrive at the parking, from there to the taking the customer, in the case of hospitality, for example, from the parking unit to taking to the room and then final departure, what are the activities, who will provide, who will serve in the night, who will in the morning, like, so all these are, has to be a kind of written down, it has, so that if person executive is there, he will do, follow the same thing, and when uh, executive B will be there, he will also has to follow the same thing, so the process, documentation is very, very important for the services, very, very important. And the people or the executive has to be very, uh, very much trained to, to take that challenges on services in con uh, delivery on. So the pro producers of the service at the same time to deliver. But the remaining four P's are more general uh, marketing mix, uh, generic uh, P's of marketing that we have understood. Intangibility, inseparability. Variability and perceivability. I think all, all these are clear for you guys. What is important as a marketeer? Since these are the challenges, intangibility. So as a marketeer, you have to tangibilize those intangibles. Inseparability does offer the challenges because the customer has to be there at, at the point of time in front of you in order to consume, in order to deliver the services. So the inseparability could be a kind of great challenge. What, what about the peak time? More and more customer, but you, are, you have the limited stuff. How you will ship that? So there, there are lots of challenges as a marketer you have to deal with. You have to uh, think, of, think upon all these challenges and as you have to come up with the strategy in order to uh, meet the expectation of the customer. That's why we are learning the, these characteristics in the service. Variability, how you will reduce the variability. It's better to have a kind of proper training to everyone so that every executive will deliver the consistency service in terms of delivery. Then unit seven, we, we had a discussion on IMC, <laughs> integrated marketing communication. And if you could remember, we had a discussion on five uh, promotion mix, uh, five communication mix or the, um, yes. So what are those uh, uh, tools, promotion tools? Five promotional tools. We had a dis great discussion on the advertising, advertising, uh, sales promotion, personal selling, public relation and direct marketing. And we have seen uh, to some, to, to a great extent, the advantage and disadvantage, positive and negative, strengths and weaknesses of each and every promotion. What memory ad suggests that, study and learn why marketing communication need to be integrated. Write down the names of the four types of communication and be able to discuss to it. I mean to say, uh, the, you need to understand why we are saying integrated marketing communication instead of simply saying communication or marketing communication, why 
what what this 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 emphasis integrated word what it signifies so probably you need to be more logical in thinking why what is the importance of having a being integrate or being integrating or uh, having an integration of all the uh, communication aids. why why if if think about if it's not integrated what will happen and if integrated properly what advantages will be more how how, how so you need to build around arguments around those those so an uh, uh, important thing is how this marketing mix again or the promotion mix again all the these five how they are related to each other so think about the linkages among this try to explore the linkages among all these promotion tools positive and negative so you can you have a kind of evaluation you can use this sort of as i said like you need to use the marketing word marketing phrases marketing model marketing framework so probably the you know maslow hierarchy you can use those word those those framework ada aida framework is again if, if any question is coming around uh, the integrated marketing uh, communication you can build around you know the get attention hold attention uh, and create the desires and then obtain the action so this ada model is aida model is again you can use while building the arguments around the uh, answers rational versus emotional appeals we have seen all the five major tools we have we had a discuss on that with lots of companies specific example yeah the way this uh, this course has been uh, developed I, I really i could see that it's a very rich in terms of content I, i'm assuming that you are in the basic you are learning the foundation of marketing this course is not the advanced marketing this is a very fundamental or the basics of marketing and keeping that one that level in mind I, i'm really saying that I'm, i'm very much sure that the content which which has been provided to you in all the slides are more than what what you deserve like what what one should learn at this level so you have very good understanding so please if you, there is no need to read any, any extra book or supplementary book i will not suggest your slides are like more than enough for, for even understanding and more real life examples company specific examples are there in your slide this is just a kind of glimpse of all the week 1 to week 8 but if you go and check the separate slides each uh, each one will have around 30 to 40 minimum so great contents very good contents are there with lots of company specific examples so just try to understand and one more thing like before the exams if uh, if you have any issues in terms of understanding and all just let me know through the email probably i i can i devote some time on the saturday or sunday on the weekends so you we, we can have a zoom session a zoom session one to one and i can take your doubts i, I will make you, your understanding more clear so in case please communicate to the email, email i will respond to uh, respond back to you through the email and i will give you the time direct and digital marketing now and nowadays it's get again it's on the height digital communication because now everything is online so online advertising social media marketing there are lots of technical aspects of technical things are there like seo search engine optimization and then there are lot lots of you know new trend in terms of online communication digital communication so that could you can explore by your own also this is the kind of summary of uh, the imc promotion mix all the five and uh, the last chapter like unit 8 today we will cover till unit 8 and uh, one hour we have on the friday uh, tutorial i will cover the 9 to 12 it will be very quick so the week 8 we studied the marketing channel members perform the key functions 
I think we, I took you from the concept of the value chain. Remember the Porter's generic value chain, primary activities, five primary activities and four uh, secondary activities. So building on that, I moved to the concept of uh, supply chain. We have seen the supply chain is a subset of the broad, uh, bigger uh, value chain. Supply chain could be uh, some of the activities if you will take from the value chain will be known as the supply chain, where we have seen primarily the procurement and the distribution logistics are the prime function, key functions around the supply chain. I think understanding these ideas and keeping that one in the mind is important. You should not add some, some, some functions which is really not a part of supply chain. So you, your whole analysis, argument, everything will be failed. So be, be careful in terms of what are the activity. I think these are the main logistics function, warehousing, and again, the logistics function, logistics is a part of supply chain. So you can think about these are the part, again, a part of supply chain management. Warehousing, inventory management, transportation, logistics, info, information system. So what memory aid says that, write down all the names of the elements of the value delivery network, but study and learn how they work together to deliver the value and to the home. Okay, I mean to say like, think about more examples, warehousing, inventory, transportation, and think about the linkages between these activities. Although all these are the part of logistics function, but the linkages can provide more and more. You know, <coughs> if you are, for example, if you are managing uh, the inventory, in a proper way, probably you will be able to, you know, cut down the cost in the transportation. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to let you know how you can relate all these functions with each other. So if, if you have the logistics information management properly, like if your, your information is properly updated, probably you will save lots of money in your transportation and uh, keeping your stuff in the warehouse. So something you need to build up, build, build the argument around in terms of linking this concept at the same time. Marketing channels, they're important, right? We have seen the case of direct marketing, channel one, whereas the indirect marketing, channel two, three, four, five, it's up to you. Big multinationals, conglomerate can have n number of uh, intermediaries, whereas in the channel one, there is no intermediaries. There is only the consumer is directly getting the product and services from the company itself. Direct marketing channel versus indirect marketing channel. We had a little bit discussion around all this vertical marketing system and conventional marketing channel versus the vertical marketing network. Had a discussion on number of outlets, selective, exclusive or intensive. So again, over here, suppose this question is coming to you. You need to provide some example, company specific example like in the case of, for example, did you notice uh, uh, intensive, I mean to say like what sort of uh, industry they prefer to have intensive number of outlets and what on the other hand, what, where, you, where did you notice which form or which industry or specific form they have selective and exclusive uh, number of outlets. So probably based on your experiences in the past, you need to provide, you will provide some of the examples while writing the answers, while making the, formulating the arguments, you will provide some examples based on your past experiences or the recent experiences. So it's a good way is like before exam, just uh, while going through all the slides contained, contents of each slide, there itself you try to think about or otherwise if you're not getting good examples, navigate through the Google, or maybe other books if you have just book, but just I think it all, all these are like self-explanatory in terms of concept. So 
it will be easy to relate with the uh, firm specific examples. Do it before as a, as a kind of rehearsal before the exam so that you can write intensive, selective, and exclusive like the cars, pianos, and the product with the high price tags are often sold this way. Exclusive distribution. They wanted the company, they wanted to have an interaction because they are selling a high-end product. So they wanted to interact. They wanted to see face to face. And you know, the role of uh, executive is very important because that that is the he actually represents the whole company. So everything matters here in the exclusive distribution. It will be a costly proposition for the firm, but yes, they do it because they know the importance of having exclusive distribution center. It helps to a great extent building a loyalty or building a relationship we have seen. If you go to the Hadley Davidson, they have only the exclusive, so you can't get it in the other shops. So, Apart from that, like I had, I gave a special uh, additional inputs on some of the marketing concept like for uh, CRM, customer relationship management or the relationship marketing or something else. So if you have those understanding in mind, you can put, you can relate, you can build the arguments around. In any of the questions, you can use some of the certain marketing concept. You can use it like whenever you feel comfortable while giving emphasis on some certain concept or certain thing, just use it, this relationship marketing or the holistic marketing or the social marketing or maybe the uh, you know, customer relationship management, supplier relationship management or the client uh, relationship management. There, there are lots of uh, keywords or the phrases out there in the marketing literature or in the market, I mean, academic world of marketing. So try to write down your answers around using those keywords will be fine. So as I said, the part B will be the next week. I mean, the last time, last one hour on Friday. The floor is open for you. Is there any questions? I'm ready to take that. Probably I will close the recording here first and then I will take your question. What is the recording option? Let's see.